If you were to look around my shop, it wouldn't take you long to realize I am kind of partial to these old Mercedes Benzes from the late 50s up to the early 1970s. And there's one thing they all have that I don't particularly like, and that's points-based ignition. That's right, the old points. Remember that, folks? We have to oh, get out there and sand them when they get corroded or adjust constantly adjust your dwell angle. Some of you may not even know what a dwell meter is. Most of you know what a timing light is, so you have to, you know, set the dwell, set the timing. A number of years ago, I took one of the cars and converted it to electronic ignition. Got rid of the points, got rid of the condenser, got rid of any contacting parts inside the distributor with a system that produces a hotter spark. And now I am a total believer in electronic ignition. Just this past week, I've completed the initial experimentation and development on the conversion for the 4.5 V8. So my 300 SEL 4.5 now has electronic ignition as well. And you may be thinking, well, Kent, you know, come on, you know, points are great. Yeah, well, that's fine if you want, you know, but if you don't want to have to mess with this, you want a nice hot spark, you want more clean burn out the exhaust, you want better fuel economy, I recommend you put in this electronic ignition. I'm going to take you over to the bench and explain why. I brought some old distributors out from the 60s. All three of these are for six cylinder. And I want to talk about why you should convert to electronic ignition. I mean, some people will say, hey, Kent, you know, points are great. Points have worked for years. I'm not going to bother. And that's fine. That's your call. The problem is these are old cars. They sit. They don't get driven every day. And some of these distributors are 50, 60 years old. So there's probably three reasons, at least three reasons why I convert. Number one, when these distributors get old, the shafts get worn and they start to have a little a bit of play, lateral play back and forth. And if any of you are familiar with points distributors, you know what happens when that shaft starts to wear. The points start jumping around and the dwell angle changes and your spark changes. So that's an issue. You can install this electronic ignition with this amount of lateral play. If it's moving a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, you know, forget it, okay? That ain't going to work. So that's a reason. You can kind of rescue an old distributor without having to completely rebuild it, remachine it, or find another one. The other reason is these old cars get parked and they don't get driven often. And so what happens is the points will corrode just from the car sitting. <laughs> Maybe you old timers have had that situation. You come out to fire up your old car. You know, you've had it parked for a few months over the winter. Maybe it's, you got moisture in the garage and it won't even fire. And you know, oh no, I got to get the sandpaper out and open up the points, you know, and sand the contacts there. So that becomes a hassle. I mean, sure, the points ignition will work and work fine because it worked for years. But it does require maintenance. <laughs> and the electronic ignition, like modern cars, doesn't. And then thirdly, and this to me is probably the most important, is that most of these old Mercedes Benzes aren't running in top form. You know, they have stretched timing chains, maybe low compression. <laughs> they get terrible fuel economy. You pull them into your garage and the exhaust fumes will almost make you gag. Well, what's nice about electronic ignition is it does produce a very hot spark, quite a bit hotter than points ignition. And what that does is gives a more complete burn of the fuel air mixture. And that's not a band-aid for a worn out engine that's poorly tuned. I recommend if you're going to make this conversion, make sure your plugs have been recently changed. Get a new rotor, get a new cap, and even get new wires. Because just installing electronic ignition is not going to solve all your problems if you haven't taken care of those issues. So you can see that this shutter just fits down there like that and it just spins with no contact with anything. 
if there's anything in the way, you'll have to remove it. This pin right here is not in the way, at least now. Then, along with the shutter, you have what's called the optical trigger. Now, as this shutter passes through the optical trigger, you can see the slot moves right there and the beam makes contact. No points opening and closing, but it's a very similar operation. As this rotates around, this being a four cylinder, each time the slot moves through there, it's gonna fire your spark plug. So the optical trigger sits right down in here. We're gonna have to pull the shutter back off and this is something you'll have to do when you install it in the car you've got to kind of you know put this in here like this and install them together line it up so it goes down okay so you can see it's kind of a tight fit but this can be adjusted like this this is like timing the engine you can adjust it back and forth so that when you want it to fire one of these slots is going to be right in the middle of this optical trigger. And when you mount it, you want it halfway. Notice the up and down movement. You want it about in the center and you want to move it in and out so it, it touches and then back off a little bit. You don't want the edge of the shutter rubbing on the optical trigger and you don't want the top or the bottom of the shutter rubbing on the optical trigger. When you first look at this, You'd look in here quickly and say, I don't see anything that's been modified. And that's one of the nice aspects of this conversion is you don't mess with any of the originality. See, if I take the cap off, you have the original cap, original wires. You use the original rotor here. But when you pull the rotor off, there's where you're going to see the difference. Look at that. No points, no condenser. So if you make this conversion on your old bends and you ever want to go back to original, just save all the parts and you can put the points, condenser, and everything back the way it was originally. You can see the new coil is installed. It fit right on the bracket. We were able to install the new ballast resistor on the other side and it used the same hole, just had to use a longer bolt. So it didn't have to drill any holes. We did have to extend the one wire from the key that comes over to the top of the ballast tree. We had to extend that wire. It just wasn't long enough from the factory. And then here you can see we made the new wire and we've got three wires coming into the positive side of the coil and we've got the yellow wire coming in to the negative side and we've got the ground right down here on the bolt that holds the strap for that coil. So we're done. Now we still have to time the thing, but if we're close and we did the alignment right, this thing should start right up. All right, we got her all hooked up. I'm just gonna see if it fires up so I know I've got it wired properly because I'm in the shop here. But let's cross our fingers, this is always fun. <laughs> Can you believe how fast that fired up? Let's hear it for electronic ignition. Check this out. Installation is complete. We have the new coil installed, the new ballast resistor installed. We have this all wired up. And if you look at it, it's not that obvious that we've made a conversion here. So now the moment of truth has come. We're ready to fire this thing up. Yeah. It's fun time. I always love firing the engines up after doing some sort of major modification. You kind of, you know, cross your fingers. Well, this should start. If you wired it properly and you got the position of the optical trigger in relation to the shutter correct, it should fire up. It may not run perfectly because it's not timed yet, but at least it should run. Let's see what happens. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. You can see what that electronic ignition does to quick starts. Now notice it's running kind of slow. I suspect that the timing is retarded at this point. What I've done is I've loosened up the bolt at the base of the distributor. Now remember, 
the rotor turns clockwise. So if I rotate this counterclockwise, I rotate the distributor counterclockwise, it will advance. See that? I'll keep going and then it'll start running and eventually it may buck against itself. That's probably too far advanced. So I'll back it down a little bit. It's not warmed up yet, so it'll be idling a little fast. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. It's good enough now to get the timing light on it and to set it according to factory specifications.